Hello, everyone. Uh, so in this video, we are going to discuss about the data breaks. So uh, we'll see how to create a Databricks platform, how, uh, how to enable the Databricks service on the Google Cloud. So uh, if you'll see Databricks is available in all other cloud platforms, it is available in AWS Azure, as well as it is available on the GCP. So just Databricks uh, on Google Cloud is available as a partner solution. And if you'll see uh, the architecture, the high level architecture of the data, Databricks, so in the Databricks, there are basically two uh, uh, like two sections. One is your control plane. Another one is the data plane. So the control plane is the one where uh, we can create our notebook. We can run our jobs. We can create our clusters. So those things we can do on the control plane. And when you are going to create the Databricks on the Google Cloud, so uh, you'll be creating a data uh, using your Google Cloud account. You are going to create a Databricks account. And on Google Cloud, uh, so if you have create, if you are creating the Databricks account for the first time using the Google Cloud, it's going to provide you 14 days uh, free trial. And after that, uh, Databricks will uh, start charging you. But for the 14 days, it's going to provide you some free credits and you can use the Databricks on Google Cloud for 14 days. So as I told on the uh, control plane, you can create your notebooks, you can create your uh, job and query, you can create the cluster and the user can directly interact with the compute, okay, user can directly interact with the control plane. So whenever you are going to create the Databricks account on the Google Cloud, so you will be having one Google Cloud account. As you can see on the architecture, so the Databricks here on the Google Cloud, it's, it, it is going to run on the Kubernetes container. Okay, So the Kubernetes is the service which, which is going to provide the all the uh, computation for the processing. So uh, Databricks is going to use the Kubernetes cluster. So by default, whenever you are, if you go to your uh, Google Cloud dashboard, so if you go to your hamburger menu, so on the menu, if you go to uh, the partner solution, so you click on more products. And on the more products, if you go to partner solution, so here you can see uh, many partner solutions are available like MongoDB, Redis and all, along with the Databricks is also available. So if you go to click on Databricks, so on this project, I have uh, already enabled the Databricks. I have already enabled Databricks on my account. So you can see it is showing the trial is active. And uh, so it will go to the pricing. So it is going to provide you uh, $10,000 for 14 days. Okay. So uh, whichever is earlier, like either if, if you consume the $10,000, then uh, the free credits will be over on the data bricks. And then after that, uh, you need to enable the paid service. Okay. So you need to enable the pay as you go subscription. Otherwise, you can use it for maximum 14 days. And then once the Databricks is enabled, so you can click on Manage Provider and it's going to in, uh, like it, it's going to take you to the Databricks workspace. So if you'll see here, uh, you need to create a Databricks workspace. So for example, I have created this workspace, which is already running. Once you will create an workspace, so the workspace will be running on the Kubernetes container. And once your workspace, uh, while it is provisioning your workspace, so you can also go to the Kubernetes and you can see, you can see on the Kubernetes, if you go to the Kubernetes service on, on your uh, Google Cloud console. So you can see the Databricks uh, is not using your Kubernetes cluster. So here, the on this cluster, so it has created the cluster already. 
So when I created the workspace using the Databricks account, so by default, Databricks is going to create the Kubernetes cluster and it's going to set up the Kubernetes nodes. And so as I told for the computation, for the processing, it is going to use the Kubernetes. Along with that, it's going to also create uh, two storage, as you can see here on the Databricks architecture. So whenever you are uh, launching any cluster, you are starting any job or you are uh, uh, using any metadata or log data. So it has to go through the Kubernetes uh, cluster. And you can so also see the, on the architecture diagram, like when you are provisioning the cluster, so it is also going to create two uh, cloud storage bucket by default. So these two cloud storage bucket will be created by the Databricks. So one is for the system and the logs information to store the system result information to store the logs information. So it's going to create one bucket. Another bucket will be your root file for uh, root DBFS file. So DBFS is the Databricks file system. Uh, so using that you can uh, so it uh, so for the DBFS it's going to create another bucket and then if you want to access other cloud storage bucket which you have created already on your Google Cloud account so you can also access those using the FS command or using the DBFS command which we are going to see and also you can connect Databricks with the external sources as well. So now let's go to my cloud, uh, let's go to the cloud storage. And if you'll go to uh, buckets, so the list of buckets which, I, which are there on my Google Cloud. So as you can see, it has created, so this cluster I created today, and you can see it has created two uh, bucket. So one is this bucket, which is the system bucket, which it has created, system GCS bucket. And it is where it is storing all the logs and the results and the jobs information. And then the other bucket is uh, is for the root folder or the for the root DBFS file. So it has created this bucket. So these are the two buckets which will be uh, created by default when you are creating the cluster. So if you'll go to your workspace, so once the workspace is created, you can click on open the workspace. And if you go to your workspace, so you can create a cluster on your workspace. So if I go to the compute, I have already created uh, this cluster. Okay. And uh, so uh, this is a 4 core 16 GB cluster. If you are using free trail account, there might be some quota limit on your account. So uh, you can see the what is the quota limit on your account, and then you can create a cluster accordingly. So better to create a, uh, if you are just doing some practice, so better to create a cluster with a very minimum configuration. And once the cluster is created, uh, so it's the same data bricks interface. You can go to your repos, you can connect to any GitHub, any GitHub repository, you can go to your workspace and here you can see your username. And under the username, you can create your notebook, you can import your notebook, you can clone any notebook, or else if, if you want to download the notebook, you can also do that. So all these uh, features are already there. And now if you'll see, I have created two uh, notebooks. So one is where like we are interacting with the Databricks and running some basic DBFS command. So once the cluster is, uh, once the compute cluster is up and running, so you can run your Databricks command. So as I told, you can use either FS command or DBFS, which is the Databricks file system in order to interact with the cloud storage. So, uh, so I, I, I am using right now the DBFS FS command. So if you'll see, if I'll just run the uh, percentage FS, it is going to show me what all FS command I can use. So I can use mount command to mount my cloud storage and I can use the uh, copy command, ls command, I can use make directory command. So these are the command which I can use. So if I'll try to uh, create a directory, so if I'll try to create a directory on the DBFS, which we saw, right, on this uh, root directory, if I want to create, so that is one, 
uh, this is the root folder, right? So here, if I want to create another directory, so one directory is available public. And now if I want to create another directory, let's say uh, with the name sample. So you can, it, it will create the directory on the root folder. So right, uh, using the DBS command, as I told, it has created uh, two directories. So you can see I'm uh, interacting with the sample. So I have just now created this directory, the sample directory. So using the DBFS, uh, you can you are interacting with the root DBFS cloud storage bucket, which it, the Databricks has already created. And similarly, you can use the FS ls command. Uh, so ls command is to list what all files and folders are there. Uh, so these are the commands which are there. You can use it. You can use the FS ls command uh, just to see what all files are there inside a folder path. And to uh, see the content of the file, we can use the FS head command. So using either you can use FS head or you can use uh, DB utils head as well, DB utils dot FS dot head. So both are same. Uh, so if you we'll use the DB FS, uh, FS head. So I have already stored this file, whatever the file you are seeing that uh, simple zip code dot CSV. So this file I have already uploaded to this public uh, folder and the same file I'm um, accessing the content of that file here using the fs command. So also if you want to access uh, uh, any other cloud storage, not the root folder, if you if you want to access any other cloud uh, storage, which you, uh, you have already created on your Google Cloud account. So you can also use the same fs command. As you can see here, so here I have uh, stored this file inside another bucket, right? So I can also access the content of that file using the same FS command. So uh, if you'll just use the <coughs> FS and here you can see the list of FS commands that are uh, available. So either you can use the FS command, percentage FS command, or you can use the uh, dbutils.fs command. So both are same. So this way, like we can interact with the cloud storage and here you can see, so these are the notebooks and if you, uh, so by default, uh, you can run the Python syntax. If you want to run SQL syntax, you can also run SQL, you can change it to SQL or you can use the magic symbol to use the SQL. So for example, uh, if I'll see, so here you can see, uh, I have created, I'm creating a temporary table so I'm using the magic command SQL and this code is written in SQL. So here I'm using the same file, which I have stored on my cloud storage bucket and I'm creating a temporary table, okay? So this file is having already the header. So that's why I have given the header option as true. And now the temporary table has been created. So I can access the content of the temporary table as well. Okay, so the temporary table, which I created zip code, so I can run and I can access the content of the temporary table. You can also run the Spark SQL command as well on the notebooks. So similarly, like uh, let's see some uh, some of the more features here. Let's go to another notebook. So if you'll see in this notebook, uh, what I am doing. So I'm extracting the data from the Google Cloud uh, storage and then I'm storing the data uh, in the BigQuery table. Okay. So that is what I'm doing. I have created some of the variables using the DB utils widget text, dot text. So the, the variable names, as you can see, the uh, source uh, directory, target directory, and the data set name. So these are the variables which I'm using. And uh, so here on this variable, so uh, I'm passing the, I have already given the variable name. So from this bucket, I'm going to extract my data. So I'm going to extract the same zip code data from this bucket. And I'm going to store my data on this uh, BigQuery table. So I have defined the variable. So instead of doing hard coding, so I'm passing the variable name. 
and using those variables like source directory, table name, and the bucket name. So these are the variables which I'm using here. So uh, here, what I'm doing, I'm creating a Spark data frame. Uh, I'm extracting the data from this source directory, which is the this uh, bucket uh, folder. Okay, and from there, I'm extracting the zip code data. Okay, so let me extract. So after reading the data and after creating this data frame, so I'm simply just uh, just going to write the data frame uh, to my BigQuery table. So if you'll see, I have already created the uh, data set here. So which is the name db dot uh, db underscore demo. So this is the data set which I am going to use, and I'll be storing the data. So you can see here. Uh, this is not the recommended way like to put all the, both the data set name, name and the table name in a single variable, but just for the uh, uh, demonstration purposes, how to use the uh, data bricks. So I have uh, created one variable and here you can see I'm passing that variable with uh, using the table name. Okay, so you will see this data set name, which I'm passing using the table name, I'm getting the data set name. And then the bucket name. So this is the temporary bucket name, which we need to provide while writing the data to the BigQuery. So uh, I can write the data to the BigQuery table. And now if I'll go to the uh, BigQuery data set, I'll do retrace. So here I can see my table is created and I have the data inserted on this table. So this way, like uh, we can create the Databricks workspace, we can create the uh, cluster and then we can uh, run our Databricks notebook on the Google Cloud as well. Okay. So that's all I have for this video.